Hello photographers, my name is Spiro Saniatis. This is where I answer your photography questions. We learn about photography together. Don't have a regular video for you this week because I am busy preparing the guide to shooting in manual mode. My comprehensive video course on how to use your camera to get the best results that you can get out of it. So if you are interested in that, I'm going to have all the details next week. What I have for you this week is a video pulled from my Understanding Flash Photography video course. It's one of the bonus videos if you want to check out the course you can click this link right here the bonus video I'm sharing with you today is on second curtain sync and how to use that second curtain sync option with your flash and what it does for you I'll see you guys next week enjoy Second Curtain Sync is one of the advanced functions that's available on some TTL flashes. What Second Curtain Sync does is allow you to change when the flash fires during the exposure that you are creating. And like other advanced functions, this is not necessarily available on all TTL flashes. So check your model and check your manual to see if it's available on your flash. And also like other advanced TTL functions, this is typically not available on manual flashes like the Lumo Pro LP180. Normally when you shoot a photo with flash, the flash fires as soon as the first curtain is entirely open and the whole camera sensor is exposed. This means the light from the flash is recorded at the very beginning of the exposure before any ambient light that is part of your photo is recorded as part of your photograph. When you use second curtain sync, the flash does not fire until just before the second curtain is about to start closing. This makes the light from the flash the last light that is recorded as part of your photograph instead of the first light. Now this option to change when the flash fires as part of your photograph is helpful when you're taking photographs that include long shutter speeds with moving subjects. Let me show you what I mean. I've got a photograph right here, and in this photo, the red streak you see is my remote control truck racing across the table as I'm taking the photograph. The camera settings for this shot were 1 second, f4, and ISO 100, and I used no flash for this particular shot. With this 1 second exposure, I captured the motion of the truck as it crossed in front of the camera, and it gives us this long streak of red, but there's no detail showing us that this is actually a truck. If I use flash during a shot like this, when the flash fires, it's going to freeze the truck truck right away in the beginning of the photograph and then it's going to capture all of the ambient light which is going to result in the streak as the truck travels across the frame and that results in a photograph that looks like this the problem with a shot like this is that it looks like the truck is zooming through the photograph in reverse in a shot like this we want it to look like the truck is zooming forward through the scene with the light streak behind it instead of zooming backwards through the scene with the light streak in front of it to achieve that we can use the second curtain sync option when we use second curtain sync the photograph is going to look like this because now the flash is firing at the very end of the photograph, freezing the truck after all of the ambient light from the photo has been recorded, putting the motion streak behind the truck where it belongs. Second curtain sync is super easy to set up. It's usually just a button. As you can see here on the 580EX2, it's actually the same button as the high speed sync button. So on the 580EX2, I have to push the button twice to get into second curtain sync, which is indicated by the icon showing these three overlapping arrows. Now, this will be different depending upon the flash that you have, so just check your manual for second curtain sync to see how to switch into that mode. Once you're in second curtain sync, the rest of the process of building a shot doesn't change. You still decide what your exposure is for your ambient light and you still set your flash settings as you normally would, but you cannot do this with TTL off of the camera. And the reason for that is the flash needs to receive the signal from the camera when to fire. And if the flash sends a flash signal from the commander to the flash, that's going to happen during the photograph and it's going to show up as part of your picture, which you don't want to happen. So you've got to shoot on camera when using second curtain sync. That's the main limitation of second curtain sync, but that doesn't mean that you can't bounce the flash off of walls or ceilings or reflectors or use other light modifiers on your camera. Now, if you're a photographer that doesn't really shoot motion or fast action and do this kind of work, then second curtain sync isn't a big deal, but it is a very nice feature to have, particularly if you shoot long exposure photography. The main issue with second curtain sync and long exposure is simply getting the timing down because the timing can be very important as far as when you start your photograph as the subject is moving through your scene and when the flash is going to fire. Because if you start your exposure at the wrong time, then your subject might be in the wrong spot in the photograph when the flash fires. So you have to practice your timing when you're using second curtain sync.